Is there like a like a coolness value to the, the flat brim fitted hat? Yes. I like the floppy ones better. When I put on like one of the fitted hats with like the real stiff front and the like stiff flat brim, I feel like I look like a poser. Like I'm like, no one believes me as a baseball player. <laughs> if I had Luke Voigt's shoulders, I could pull off a flat brim. <laughs> exactly. Hat. I'm Hannah Kaiser and this is The Bandwagon. Yeah. Yeah. Last week I picked all-stars from a barely month-long first half of the season, and that was quickly and correctly overshadowed by the incredible display of solidarity throughout all sports as athletes walked out of their games to protest the continued police brutality against black people in this country. MLB's disjointed demonstration across several days was really actually genuinely deeply moving, and even though it was not an MLBPA-sanctioned organized action, a really powerful reminder that labor always has the leverage. This week we are back to baseball and teams, but we are still doing something a little bit different while bandwagoning the twins with randy dobnak we are joined today by twin starter to tell us why should i root for the twins this week uh, i mean we got a really good team i went down from rock as our manager i mean all the guys in the clubhouse get along offensive side defensive side and the pitching stats are pretty good this year and we hit a lot of home runs so it's always fun do you have a favorite twins home run this year is there one in particular that you always remember there was one that sano hit at Miller Park, and this, he hit the ball, and it was literally like the loudest thing I've ever heard. A long blast to left field. Huh. Up in the slide. I have no idea where that landed. They said it was like 455 or something like that, but there's no chance it was that short. He said he didn't get all of it. I was like, there's no way that you can hit the ball further than that. Could you hit a home run? Okay, I know you are in the AL, so it has not come up yet. And now with the DH and the NL, it might never come up. But like, if you had to, could you hit a home run? Yeah, I used to be pretty good at hitting back in the day. I mean, it's probably been six years since I swung a bat. But I mean, if you give me a few rounds of BP, I could probably put one out there. The other day, I actually almost had a bat. I was in the dugout with the helmet on and a bat in my hands. Somebody got hurt. So it kind of just needs somebody to stand in the box. And Rocco came over and was like, hey, you want to you hit him? Like, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> but then he told me that I wasn't allowed to swing, so I was like, kind of upset about that. But I go back to the clubhouse and I looked at my phone and my buddies had already screenshot it. You get a poster made up of that, just like just like you standing in the dugout with a bat. It's like, look, I made it to the majors, yay! Finally <laughs> made it. Hi, Mom. <laughs> Your story as the uber-driving Unica Unicorns Indie League guy turned postseason starter in under two years is very well known and very, very well deserved. And now you are one of the most successful pitchers in the league this year. And my question is, did you know you were this good? I don't really like to boot, boost myself up a little bit, but I, say, I think that, you know, my mental side of the game is really good. If you go out there on the mound and you don't have the confidence in yourself to throw whatever pitch and whatever count or attack the hitters and stuff like that, you know, the results aren't, are going to show that. So if you go out there with the conf most confidence in the world in yourself, like, you know, like I do, more often times than not, I think good things are going to happen from that. I mean this in the nicest way possible. Are your teammates surprised that you're this good this year? I don't really know. They haven't really approached me that. But I have guys like joke around with me like, hey, you're the best pitcher ever, dude. I'm like, I mean, I'm not. But if you want to keep saying that's fine. Who is the biggest Randy Dobnak fan on the Twins? The guy that tells me that a lot is Zach Littell. He's, uh, he's a good dude. He's funny. I played with him a little bit last year in AAA and then in the big leagues last year. So we kind of, you know, get along. And he's always joking around with me about that kind of stuff. Okay, have you seen the tweet that's you and Nelson Cruz? <laughs> <laughs> that's true. You just put them together, it's a full beard. Does your wife like the facial hair? Originally, when I first did it last year, it was my, I had a start in low A or high A down in Fort Myers. And I think I gave up a run. It was the first one this season. So I kind of just like, you know, trimmed my beard up a little bit and left like a little bit of a Fu Manchu going just for the day because normally I would just do that and send a picture of it to my wife and she'd be like, what are you doing? I'm like, I don't know. Later that day, I actually got sent to double A. So it kind of just stuck with me throughout there. You know, things kept happening in double A, then triple A. My wife actually told me that I had to keep it for the wedding. It kind of just kept growing on me and growing on her. And she's like, you know what? I mean, that's, that's your look now, so. What do you think of the seven inning doubleheader? Should all games be seven innings? Should all, all games be seven innings? No, yeah. I, I, think, I, like, I do like the doubleheader seven innings. I think it helps the, you know, the bullpen guys don't get taxed as much for playing you know, so many games. I think we just had like 20 days in a row with the game or something like that. 
but it's definitely kind of weird, you know, if you're in like the sixth inning, it's like, oh, well, we only have two more chances to put runs up on the board or something like that. This year is super weird, so don't feel bad if you don't, but do you know what the postseason format is? I have no idea. I have not heard anything. I don't, I don't really know. I get all my news from Twitter, so. If the Twins are playing the Pirates, who are really, really bad, which they are, and the Twins are really good, which you are, and you weren't pitching, and it was late enough in the season that you already knew you were going to make the playoffs and there was no chance that the Pirates were going to make the playoffs, would you root for the Pirates? No, I still root for the Twins. <laughs> Is there any reason anyone should root for the Pirates this year? Probably not, honestly. See, I was going to say we could have you back for a Pirates episode, but not with that kind of attitude. I mean, I'll come back for a Pirates episode. All right, you heard it here first. We are apparently going to have to bandwagon the Pirates, for which we will bring back Randy Dobnak of the Twins to tell us why the Pirates are so fun. Thanks so much for being here, Randy. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Physical twins. Like the 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 actual existence of babies being born at the same time? Yep. <laughs> Are there any twin baseball players? There's twin basketball. I know basketball players. There are twin basketball players? And they have the same tattoos. So they look they, exactly no, the same. No, they do not. Yes, they do. Boys. <laughs> 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 Why? Why did you do that? Being pregnant seems awful as a person who has never done that. And so if you want to have two babies, having them at the same time seems convenient. <laughs> <laughs> you only have to give birth once. Bad. Indians trading Clevenger. Not a huge fan of the Indians yeah. trading my Clevenger because they are contending. They are hoping to make it very far in October and they uh, unloaded one of their best pitchers. But from Clevenger's perspective, huge fan. He has to leave behind the stupidity of breaking COVID protocols, ending up in San Diego, getting to leave Cleveland to move <laughs> to San Diego and instead be like a, a, a shining emblem of how exciting the Padres are this year. He got like a image upgrade and a lifestyle upgrade all in one for having pissed off his coworkers and breaking COVID protocol. The Marlins buying. The Marlins added pieces, most notably Starling Marte from the Diamondbacks, or as I call them, the Dubacks, and <laughs> <laughs> who feels spiritually like he's always been on the Marlins. I'm enjoying the Marlins. This is like the only year where it would work. Like, remember when we bandwagoned the Marlins and it was like, this is so funny how they're pretty good considering they're not very good. And that's enough this year. So cool. Bam. Jimmy Rollins pre-rolls. Are these officially licensed? I mean, he tweeted them out. They look like they Oh, have a he logo. tweeted them out? Oh, yeah. That's cool. That's cool. <laughs> He's retired. He should chill. You don't get tested for it in the big leagues anyway. <laughs> That's true. You don't get tested for it in the big leagues. Dessert hummus. Oh, this is like Nutella flavored hummus. So that comes up sometimes. And I would never, ever eat that. Not a fan. Good answer. No, don't do that to chickpeas. What did they ever do to you? <laughs> <laughs> And now we are going to do a segment that will help pay the bills, but it's also going to be pretty good content. One of my favorite parts of baseball has always been acrobatic and borderline masochistic catches that outfielders make, putting their body in a whole bunch of inevitable bruises on the line for the sake of a single out. Hardly seems worth it. So we are going to highlight some of the players who recently demonstrated just how much they are made of dedication to their team, presented by USAA. First up is Giants' Mike Yastrzemski, who clotheslined himself on the top of the Dodgers' bullpen to rob Justin Turner of a home run and managed to land, looking like he's just chilling, just enjoying the beautiful day in San Francisco. Nary a care in the world, which might actually just be the mustache, really helps him look cool. And my favorite part of this clip is when we cut back to Andrew Suarez, who I'm sure is very, very appreciative that Mike Yastrzemski made this catch, but he ends up looking like, man, why you gotta be so good at baseball, showing up everybody else? <laughs> Our next play is Scott Kingery of the Phillies, who threw himself into a chain link fence for a team that was definitely gonna blow that one run lead later anyway. Uh, <laughs> really good slow-mo on this one, and I will let John Crock tell you how that probably felt. Ooh, that one hurt. Full bore into a fence. Then his butt hit that ground solid, but man, what a heck of a play. Kingery and Yaz's dedication is brought to you by USAA, proud supporter of the military community. What you're made of, we're made for. This week we bandwagon the twins with a little bit of help from Randy Dobnak. The twins have been not super great since we decided to bandwagon <laughs> them, but we are hoping that this episode puts them back on the right track. And if it does, that will inspire other baseball players to come and talk to us and give their team a boost. Bandwagon Bob! Bandwagon Bob! Come on the show!